In this video, I'm going to show you how I created these renders from start to finish, from simulation with flip fluids, enhancing the sim with geometry nodes, and realistic shading, lighting, and rendering. First, I had to figure out how to make ocean waves. I followed this awesome tutorial. He did a ton of simulation tests with various conditions to make the best waves. So I started from the version that he liked the best. My setup looks like this. An ocean floor that slopes up and then has a little bump near the shoreline to create extra wave action and an underwater wave generator that moves up and down at regular intervals. I also added a rock because I knew it would help me frame up my shots and hide the edge of the fluid simulation which is a pain. You can get my source file on my Patreon which includes the final file with all my shaders. Keep in mind it does require the flip fluids add-on and I did it in Blender 4.3. I did a few simulations to get the right speed and amplitude for the wave generator. I had to add a little pause in between the cycle or else the simulation would pick up momentum and go crazy. Like a second wave would be induced before the first one could calm down. And then there's white water. I experimented with those settings because by default it wasn't generating enough foam. I turned wave crest emission rate to 225, same with turbulence. And then I also turned up the max particles so I wouldn't uh, max out. You can't have photorealism without enough detail. So I cranked up the subdivisions to 450. I would try to go higher with that and it would look better. As you can see, there's some chunky bits and the fluid droplets. But I'm about to show you a bunch of shading and geometry node tricks to improve this result. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. Help me reach my goal of 20,000 subscribers. The first thing I want to do is get rid of all these individual little fluid particles. After a quick Google search, I found a geometry node setup that deletes mesh islands based on scale. And boom, they're gone. I also smoothed the mesh using this setup, and that helped it have a more fluidy look. Even though I had generated extra foam, it still wasn't a realistic amount according to my references. As you can see, there's just a ton of foam where the waves meet the shore. So I duplicated the foam particles, and I also did that with the splash and bubble particles with a random offset in geometry nodes. And that gave me three times the number of particles without resimming. It just gave me more density. I also reduced the particle size so it wouldn't be so obvious they're just little spheres. Photorealistic lighting is easy these days. I just used the Nishida sky and turned down some settings so it's not so blown out. I also lowered the sun in the sky and angled it to rake across the rock. I like medium high contrast lighting because it adds interest and it keeps your renders from look ending up flat. And it also distracts from any imperfections. I spent a lot of time on shading because I wanted to get my water and foam to look as realistic as possible. For the water shader, I started with the default water shader that comes with flip fluids. It's optimized and it renders quick, but I wasn't totally happy with it. So I ended up with a volume scatter slash absorption add shader where you can tweak the absorption to get the deeper colors and the scatter to get those shallower, brighter colors. So I got this nice blue-green fall off that you see in the tropics. The shallow waves were problematic. So I created a fall off from the shore mesh using geometry proximity. And I used that in the fac of a mix shader to make the fluid more transparent the closer it got to the shore. I also shifted the shore up just a little bit. I still wanted more foam. So I used the same fall off trick for the foam particles, driving the fac of a mix shader. So the areas around foam particles would be a white shader. I blurred it and multiplied it by the velocity so I wouldn't have uh, little white circles around every particle. And now for the foam and bubbles. If you look close at ocean foam, as you can see, it consists of tiny air bubbles. So I found a bubble shader. It's pretty simple, and it's really just transparency and reflection. And there was instantly a nice boost in realism. At first I had a refractive shader on the underwater bubbles, but they ended up looking like boba, which I then realized they're just air. 
as well. So I slapped the same bubble shader on them and they instantly looked like bubbles. For the shore, I gave it a nice sandy color and subtle noise displacement. And I also made a fall off based on the distance from the water using dynamic paint to make it darker and more reflective closer to the waves. And that really helped blend it with the water. I tried out a few camera angles and I discovered this GoPro style looked pretty cool. The others I left static because I didn't want to detract from the motion of the waves with a ton of fancy camera movement. I did use the lens sim add-on for some of them so I could get some natural bokeh, chromatic aberration, vignetting. It's really nice. It just takes longer to render. All these renders all together took 92 hours on a 4090 at 2560 by 1440 resolution. When you render a lot of volumetrics and reflections, overlapping refractions and stuff, you want to crank up your bounces. So I set them to 64 for almost everything. If you don't turn up your bounces, you'll get these dark little bubbles underwater because they just are not getting any light rays. Another couple of things with rendering flip fluids, you'll need to click this initialize motion blur button for motion blur to work. And then you should render through the command line render in flip fluids because rendering through regular blender was having some glitches and it's a bit unstable. In fact, it says so. Finally, I did some sound design using free sounds from Soundly, which is an awesome app. And this was the result.